lot of interesting trinkets and stuff around here. Just walking around the marketplace. Have all this kind of stuff. Got all these alpacas like this bro. I want to talk today about um, something that's a little bit more transparent when it comes to traveling. Some of the things that I guess I didn't anticipate when it comes to doing solo travel and traveling the world and like all the things that I said I wanted to do in my video. Um, and I think the biggest uh, difficulty or one of the things that really kind of hit me hard is just how it can be sometimes um, pretty lonely, honestly. While you can do all this cool stuff, you can live a life of freedom. Traveling alone is, is difficult. I've had my days where I just, you know, I'm so sad and so lonely and it's, it's difficult to remember to honestly get out there and to meet people, but it's so important to do. I think mental health is number one always when you're traveling. Um, always to make sure that you're trying to maybe have positive affirmations or meditation or whatever you need to do to keep your sanity because it really can be lonely when you're traveling alone, um, particularly for extended periods of time. I can't tell you just the number of times where I kind of you know, question what, what I was doing with my own trip. And that's just being honest. It's something that's very important. It's something that I don't think is covered enough when it comes to business and traveling. And you only show the cool side, which is all the places you're going. We don't get to see the other stuff, which is happening behind the scenes. You know, for anyone else out there who does struggle with mental health, honestly, struggle is real, man. And, um, it's, it's sometimes it's a daily battle, sometimes it's a weekly battle. Sometimes it comes in waves. Sometimes you feel super prepared. Sometimes you feel like you just don't even want to get out of bed in the morning. And um, for me, that's kind of been the case my entire life. Like I'll go back into old journal entries. I'll even read my recent journal entries. And I'm like, dude, you're feeling really depressed this week or you're feeling really bad this, this day. And I have difficulty, honestly, identifying my own emotions. I think the biggest part of it is just accepting that it's okay sometimes to you know, not have all those answers and it's okay to struggle with these different things. And um, there's one message is I would just say, um, I know what it's like, it sucks. Keep on with it, whatever it is you're struggling with. Because there are good things in this world. I mean, sometimes hard to, hard to remember that, but even just majestic sights like this and beautiful things you can do, people that you can meet. Sometimes it's difficult to remember that, but it's hard to, I think when you're, you're so focused or you're so focused on beating down yourself and all the things you've done wrong in your life and you know, everything. But um, I think it's important to, to remember that. And I hope that some of my videos here, you know, not only give you some great business content, um, maybe some great life advice, maybe just even seeing me um in these different places you get a sense that you can also do this that there's no reason why why you can't but i also hope that you know you take some of the stuff i'm saying with genuine transparency because i really am trying to reach you and i'm really i think a lot of these times these, in these videos talking to myself honestly you have to create your own reality you have to create your own things that you care about your belief systems how you're going to spend your time the things that are important to you this is vital and this is crucial if you want to in any kind of way stand out above the average if you don't want to just be an average person you got to have standards that are much higher than the average person you know for example the public school system is amazing for some types of people they're going to certain types of employees and certain types of jobs but if you want achieve anything more than that you got to put in more work you have higher standards for your life similarly with like dieting you know the average american diet you think about this this produces really average results when it comes to your body if you want a more superior body if you want to be more fit if you want to be more muscular you got to have a different diet you got to raise your standards above what is average you got to plan things out you got to set aside time to learn things you got to read books that are difficult to learn that that are hard to get through that are very dense material wise it's kind of like going to the gym like well yes you can have a great time a great workout at the gym you can enjoy yourself it's not meant to be there for enjoyment it's meant to actually break down your muscles so you can grow stronger it's meant to push yourself 
to your absolute limits so you can come back the next day and do the same thing. And over time and over time, eventually you start to get stronger and stronger. It's meant to be a workout. It's not meant to be you know, just pure enjoyment. If it was pure enjoyment, it'd be a freaking game, man. It'd be something fun that you're playing with your friends. As you're going out there and you're trying to actually set standards for your life, you're starting to create a really rigid foundation and you're almost trying to create your own reality in a sense. Um, among all these other people who have different views and different ideas of how the world works, you're always gonna be challenged. You're gonna have people who push up against you and say, why are you working so much, man? Or do you really think you can become a full-time blogger? Do you really think you can become a YouTuber or a podcaster? There's no way that you're gonna be able to travel and make money at the same time. So whenever you have very strong opinions, you have a very strong idea of what you want for your life, anytime someone has a different belief system or a different view, they're always gonna attack you and they're always gonna wanna challenge that because you're also challenging their view of the world and their perspective when it comes to their life. I remember very clearly that when I was just first getting started writing books, so many people said to me, you're never gonna get make money as an author, you're never gonna make money writing books, why don't you start an agency, why don't you do something where there's a little bit more money involved and it's kind of true to what I was talking about earlier um, I was always a little bit tempted you know because I'm thinking maybe I could make more money more I could do this but then I remembered what my commitment was what I really wanted to do and kind of what I want to do at least at that stage in my life and what I started to do was I started to just tune out people anyone who didn't have any kind of helpful advice when it came to publishing books on Amazon or creating audiobooks I would just tune out their advice people would say you should start an agency, or you should do this, or you should do that, and that'd be awesome, man, that's great, maybe I'll do that in the future. But I'd then focus back on what my original goal was, which was just to publish more books and to write more books. And I would only listen to the people that could actually forward that vision or forward that goal for me. When I started to do that, I started to actually make progress. I started to actually do more and come out with more books and come out with um, you know, even better quality books when it comes to the formatting, the paperback version, the audio version, even writing about the correct topics that are profitable topics. It's important to listen to people, but at the same time, you gotta tune people out if they aren't where you wanna be. Your mom, your dad, your friends, they might have incredible advice when it comes to things in your life. It's important to listen to them but when it comes to business. You gotta listen to the people who can help you attain the real results when it comes to the objectives that you want to achieve. And that is the only way you're gonna get closer to any of your goals. We all got a limited amount of time in life, man. You never know how much time you got on this earth. You never know how much time you have in terms of a window of opportunity in your life. Maybe you're gonna have kids, maybe you already have kids, they're at a stage where you can maybe focus a little bit on this business, but you never know if that's gonna be true. Maybe you're gonna have another kid come along, or maybe one of your parents is gonna fall ill, or you're gonna have family drama or family issues that you have to take care of. It's important to always seize the moments of opportunity, always seize um, the opportunities that life presents to us. You know, carpe diem, you gotta seize the day. I'm a very strong believer in that, and that's one of the reasons why I've been deciding to travel a lot more because I don't know, maybe in the future I'm gonna have kids, I'm gonna have a family, I'm gonna have more of a wanting to focus on growing my business and not traveling, I want more stability in my life. Now I'm at a point in my life where I can actually do this and it's important to do things that when they're presented to you to really grasp them and to, to, to live them fully, I think. And that's the whole goal with this channel is to show you how to live a life of freedom. When I was just first getting started with business, I was so scared, I was so anxious, so nervous about doing something that people considered risky. You know, my dad would always say, you can be sued in business for thousands of dollars, that it's super risky to start a business, that you never know if you have competitors, what they're willing to do in order to sink your business and these different things. I just had such a negative view in my head of people who were willing to take the risk to go into business, even people in my family who tried to take that risk and ended up thousands and thousands of dollars in debt. And I never wanted that to happen to me. So I'm like, how can I hedge this risk? You know, how can I approach this discipline without, without doing things that are going to end me in a financial hole? So my idea was that Rather than trying to start my own business, I was going to just piggyback onto the ideas of other people. So, for example, um, I had one person I met at a networking event. Of course, we only met like one time, and he was starting a business kind of similar to Dropbox. Dropbox also already existed, which was cloud storage. And I was like, yeah, man, that sounds like a great idea. I'm willing to help you do this. You know, we met a few times, and it just kind of fizzled out. You know, there wasn't really that much commitment. And on my part, I didn't really know what to do, honestly, in order to grow this business and grow this thing. You know, I'd meet other people at networking events where they had an idea for like a recruitment software agency and I started to work with them for a couple of months and started to help them get clients and, and these different things and maybe I would get like five or ten percent of the company if it ended up going well but at the end of the day that person still was not as committed as I was to making something of themselves and 
quite frankly, I think it's because I was pretty young and I was just willing to do anything that it took, um, throwing lots and lots of hours at the wall in order to see what worked. There's so many, so many examples of this just in my life where I would try to piggyback on the ideas of other people. Um, even when I was in uh, moving to New York, um, I was with a co-founder and we were doing a, a music business, kind of like think about Spotify or Bandcamp, something like that. And um, I was always trying to get him to move to New York. Like I made the leap. I moved here with moved to New York with only one month's rent. And I was like, come on, dude, like we got to start this thing. We'll, we'll be in the same apartment and we'll work all day and we'll party a little bit at night and we'll really start this business. Like that was my, my whole vision of moving to New York. York. Month after month passed, you know, the months would go by and he would put it off even more. You know, man, I got to save a little bit more money or I'm not sure um, I got to take care of some family stuff or it's just not right right now to move to New York. And finally, after six months, I was like, dude, this is never going to happen. You're never going to move to New York. Um, you know, I moved here without, moved to New York without any money really. And he was just too hesitant. He wasn't committed enough to the vision that we could actually do something together. It was so, such a big letdown for me at that point in, in my life. And I was like, okay, so what am I going to do now? How am I going to support myself? What's going to be the idea? And that was really the first time after about a year of trying to start projects on piggyback onto the, you know, the back of other people's ideas. And I was like, you know, I just got to risk this thing. I got to say, what the fuck? And I got to start my own business. Really, it was only once I went all in on myself, when I went all in on what my skill set was, which was writing, what my passion was, which was you know crowdfunding in this particular niche in this industry, and I really went all in on myself that I started to see a glimmer of success. I started to get more and more traffic to my blog. I started to get people reaching out to me saying, hey, can I hire you? Um, can I buy an hour of your time? Can you help me with promotion? Can you help me with marketing? You seem to know a lot about this. I'd love to just get your thoughts on this. That's for me when the business started to grow and started to explode. And it was only once that that little decision of just going all in on myself is what enabled that to happen and what unlocked this entire new life for me and all these possibilities, being able to now travel the world, being able to hire freelancers to help me out um, and having that confidence that I can be a business owner and I can be at the forefront of it. I can be the leader, not the person who's following or not the person who's piggybacking on someone else's idea. So man, I urge you, Make the decision, you know, make the commitment. Finally say, put it in writing if you can, but finally say, I'm gonna at least give myself a shot. I'm gonna at least give myself the opportunity to try this out, to start a business, to launch a YouTube channel, to write a book, to become a consultant, to become a coach, to start a podcast, whatever your dream is, there's so many out there. Um, at least make the decision that you're gonna bet on yourself, on your skills, and that if you're going to fail, it's not gonna be because you didn't work hard enough. That's the best gift that you can give yourself in life is to be willing to be confident in your own decisions and they might not work out, you might fail, you might make the wrong decision, honestly, but at least you made your own freaking decision and at least you can learn from that. And that's really how over time, wisdom grows and you begin to come way more insightful about just how life works, how business works. That's where true confidence comes from, is making decisions, taking action, and not caring what the results are gonna be, and just seeing what happens, putting yourself out there. Hope you like this YouTube video. My name is Salvador Brigman. Take a second to subscribe to this channel. Check out some of the other videos I got out there, and I'll see you next time.